turn turn to the teacher turn 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 to the What's going on, everyone? Mike here with the Turntable Teachers, and class is officially back in session, and we are here for another guest speaker episode. And on today's episode, I am very thrilled to have my next guest with me. We have Jacob Ezra joining the show. He is a music writer. He's an artist. I uh, just started a, a company as well, so he's an entrepreneur. There's a lot, a lot of great things going on with Jacob, and uh, we're excited to have him on the show. Jacob, how are you today, man? Thanks so much for stopping by the Turntable Teachers. I'm I'm doing great. I'm I'm. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So yeah, I'm doing well. Today's been good. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, we've definitely been in talks for a while, and uh, so I'm really excited that we got to actually finally do this. And uh, you know, I think we had, we had scheduled this a couple months out. So I'm, I'm glad we're finally sitting here. It feels it feels like it went by quick though, huh? In in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah. It does. The past few months have been flying by, but I was I was really looking forward to doing this and everything. So. Definitely, man. Definitely. Well, I just to start, like I said, you, you're kind of a jack of all trades in a lot of ways. You do a lot of different things. So we have plenty to talk about. Uh, the first thing I want to just start with, though, is kind of just getting to know you a little bit, um, your early years, like with music and background and things like that, because I know you're you're a hip hop artist, a rapper, um, you know, so like just kind of talking to me to talk to me a little bit about like, you know, your biggest influences and like inspirations, like what made you like start actually like being like, oh, hey, maybe I can like actually be an artist. Totally. Um, you know, it's interesting because I was always, ever since I was a little kid, I was always writing stories and poems and things. So I was always re really into writing. Oh, wow. And I just kind of, you know, my dad, he was, my parents both are really into music. They had like a record collection and they just sort of started playing records around me when I was young. And I remember they, my father playing like Digital Underground and like that was kind of the first hip hop that I remember being introduced to. And then after a while, I got so into hip hop and just these different artists, Digital Underground and Tribe called Quest and stuff. Mm. And I was just like thinking, you know, why I'm already writing these stories. I'm already writing poems like you know, I can change the poems, add some more rhymes. Like, why can't I try rap? And that was kind of initially just a curiosity. Like, I just, I was like, why not give it a try? And it's, it stuck with me. I, I've loved it ever since, you know, but that's kind of the origin of how I started. That's super cool. So just for context, like I'm an English teacher myself. So I am big into poetry and stories and all that stuff. Love to read, like all that. I, I'm not really much of a writer myself as it comes to like, uh, like stories and things like, like creative writing, but I totally get the analytical side of things. I guess it's a pretty good segue because I, I didn't realize that you started with writing, so that's great. Um, so you are a music writer yourself. You write for Ear Milk, which is, a, you know, if anyone's listening to this, I'm sure a lot of people know that that's a quite a, a really, you know, uh, profound platform to be writing on. So talk to me a little bit about like, you know, when did you start writing like about music? Like when when when, when was it for you where you uh, you know, like obviously started getting into that and then obviously the um, really the opportunity to start writing an ear milk. Talk to me a little bit about your writing history. Totally, totally. I, I, I didn't st like, you know, at the beginning it was mostly stories and poems, but over time, you know, I just I fell in love with music. So <clears throat> I just write little over the years, just write little things down, like things I was noticing in the music just for fun. And I kind of, you know, write about the music kind of like journaling about things I was listening to. And it's funny because at that time, you know, I really didn't think it would really lead to, <laughs> to anything. Right. But in hindsight, I'm like, now that I'm doing ear milk, I'm like, I have kind of been doing this for a long time in a right. sense, although it wasn't very serious before or anything. And then, you know, so that was really how I started just journaling about these songs that I liked and making little lists of my favorite rappers and, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And then I started writing for a few smaller blogs a few years ago. I did some writing for one called OK Though. It's like a hip hop blog and some for another one called uh, Beat Root. Uh, and it's that's a local one for me in, in Canada. Um, and, uh, then ear milk, I, I, I found ear milk on a, on like a job posting for, cause I was just, I was like, oh, I really want a music industry, something yeah. in music. I want to work in something in music. So I was just applying to all these and then, uh, ear milk, you know, they, they got back to me, awesome. but, um, yeah, so that's kind of, but at first it went into my junk mail and I almost didn't see it. And for some reason, something, <laughs> I was like, I need to check my junk mail and. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it was there and luckily I, I replied in time and everything but that was almost like it almost didn't happen it was kind of yeah. stressful for a sec but that's yeah funny. so uh, that's that's actually so you just had that like inner like voice like check your junk bill like hey just, like shit happens like that for a reason sometimes it was clearly meant to be that you're supposed to write for them you know what i mean so that's that's fantastic dude and uh i love that so are you originally from canada is that correct no okay yeah. I, oh okay all right so and you're and you're still in canada yeah no way so what, what part of canada I'm from uh, Vancouver on the West Coast. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because you've so how we got in in uh, in touch with you, or like how I got to like know you a little bit, because you I think you were writing for a lot of affiliate like artists that we work closely with, like the Athelace uh, label and like Dev Soder and China Blue and you know obviously Tyler Donovan and all those guys. How did you How did you get acquainted with them? Uh, I first met them through. Um, this artist who I was writing on called DK. Oh, oh, um, you, oh you knew DK. That's right. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. DK was actually the guy who I kind of found out about a lot of mass artists from. That's because awesome. I wrote about him, and he was introducing me to all these people. And then I guess Tyler, he he saw the piece I did on DK because I wrote on DK for Ear Milk, and um, so then we started talking, and I, I wrote on on um, Dev and China Blue, both the really talented guys. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's kind of how it happened with them. That's too funny. They're all Turntable Teachers alumni, all of them. They've all been on the show. Uh, DK is a great uh, friend of the show as well. And uh, just a talented. I mean, all of them are very talented. But DK, is, he's, he's got a hand in all of it, right? He can do the mixing and mastering and the production. And he's a good artist as himself. He can rap. He can sing. He's definitely, uh, he's got a great ear for uh, for melodies and just he's a great craft of, crafter of songs. So yeah. Um, it's funny you started with DK. He's he's a good, great guy, great guy to a uh, great big personality too. We we definitely love DK around here. Yeah, he introduced me like through him. I found a lot of really cool artists, and yeah, he's he's very talented himself. And yeah, it's really cool. I, I really like these artists in mass that I've been you know coming across, and it's it's quite it, it's been a it's been a cool experience to discuss to sort of learn about them and their work, and yeah. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. Like for us, just again, like again, obviously we're a Massachusetts pod based podcast as well. So for someone that's not from Massachusetts to really like take the time and want to get to know Massachusetts, because we're not like a big music, you know, um, in just like a uh, you know area. Like we we have a lot of artists. We have a great budding, you know, indie scene here, but we're not really like a nationally known, you know, scene. We just we're just not. You know, when you think like. Uh, in the United States, when you think, you know, music scenes, in particular with hip hop, like a lot of times you go to LA and Atlanta and New York and Chicago and Boston and Massachusetts in general just doesn't really get that type of, you know, notoriety and attention and publicity. But so it's really cool for someone like you that is completely on the opposite side of like <laughs> the continent, right? <laughs> to, uh, to be into us. So we really appreciate that, man. That's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I love it. Thanks. So I appreciate you guys as well. Like it's, it's really dope to have connected with, with people out there and everything. So. Yeah. 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 So we, yeah, like I said, it's just great to, to, to have someone out, out on, on, especially in Canada to, uh, to be, you know, uh, fucking with our stuff and what we're doing out here. Cause like I said, there's a, there's a great scene here. There's a lot of amazing artists. Uh, those guys are certainly some of them for sure. Um, so talk to me a little more about ear milk. So you've been writing for them for how long? Rough, is it a little less than a year? Is that true? I'd say it's uh, f four or five months now. Okay, so not not of... very long. It's pretty recent since I've joined on with them. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Excuse me. No, no worries, yeah. no worries. And uh, so talk, talk to me a little bit, like some like what are some like some of your favorite articles or like moments you've had at Ear Milk so far. I know it's like it's only been four or five months, but t talk to me a little bit, because like, you just had a really big one actually. You just announced recently, so I definitely want to hear about that one. And it was an artist I'd never heard of, so I'm I'm definitely curious to go listen to some of his music. I didn't get a chance to before we hopped on here, but. Uh, so tell me a little bit about some like your your favorite moments writing for Ear Milk and like some of the connections you've made doing that. Sure, I mean that's a great question. Actually, I was hoping someone would ask me this um, eventually, but you know, I my hmm, it's I think my my favorite. I it was the I, honestly uh, it was the this one that that I just wrote um, about Seti Hendrix. And uh, I think that one, because, you know, in the form of these, it's an interview and the way we write interviews at Ear Milk, it's more of like a profile of the artist using quotes from the interview. And I just think like the storytelling element, how I'm sort of able to tell the artist's story and make it more of like a narrative 
um, that really is enjoyable. And I think that's something I really have liked. I've only done a couple interviews so far. Um, most of them are more like posts about like new music, mm -hmm. but the interviews I think are my favorite to write because of the story element. So I'd say, but this one with Seti Hendrix, I'd say it was the, it was, it, I think that was my favorite, but, um, I just, I overall, like, I really like, you know, there's so many artists that I, I've come in contact with that I never really would have known about before. And it's, it's really, it's expanded my, my world. Like I learn about, I think one really cool thing is like learning about these different pockets and scenes. That's a really cool part of it. Yeah. 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 No, that's fantastic, man. I love that uh, you're able to like, I didn't even think about it that way, but I, I, I actually, you know, somewhat, I, I uh, really agree with you and, and can empathize with you in a lot of ways because you know, I grew up in Massachusetts my whole life, and the only really things I ever knew about Massachusetts or like the artists I knew from Massachusetts were like the big names, like Cousin Stiz and Joyner Lucas, and um, started to get onto Bia a little bit and some other artists like that, but Token maybe like, but besides that, like, I didn't really, Michael Christmas maybe another one, but like, besides those couple artists, like, I didn't really understand like what was even here. So then when I started the podcast, that's when I got embedded into the music scene here. And I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot here. And and things like this have been really cool, too, because random, you know, artists, I, sh I shouldn't say random, my, my apologies, not random, but, you know, other artists that from other scenes, right, have, you know, whether they've worked with somebody from Massachusetts or they just maybe stumble upon us on Instagram or social media or whatever, or, or hear a podcast, like, it's cool to hear you know, and hear from other artists from other areas. Like there's a, a an artist that his name's EJ Mallard, uh, amazing artist from Houston. Like never would have found this guy without the platform. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just one example. Uh, Young Mono is another guy. He's from Atlanta. He's in the indie scene down there. Like so, just it's just really cool to like, uh, you know, get to know some of these other artists like from these scenes. Like you're like you're saying, and um, who are like some of your favorite artists you found from like Ear Milk? Like just from being able to. Uh, right for them like what's been like somebody like the artists like you've come across that you're like oh wow like this, this is this is going to be in heavy rotation oh that's yeah it's um actually i wrote about a group recently called bungalow collect what a name they're, yeah <laughs> yeah it's a cool name uh they're from brooklyn i think and it's like a group of four or five guys and i the the, the track i i wrote on uh for them it just came out recently the piece on them but it's a really cool track and i i've been listening to that quite a bit it's like this like hip-hop mixed with house electronic Ooh. vibe that i like like kind of like in the gold link style and mm. it's really cool it's 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 fresh like it just feels fresh when you listen to it that that's one of the as far as recent acts um that's one of the most interesting that I mean I like a lot of them but that's one that kind of I've been actually like it's on my there's songs on my playlist and right. that I've been listening <clears throat> excuse me listening to and like there's this guy Cassius King uh he's he's from LA and okay. he's a rapper I actually knew of him for I've known of him for quite a long time but I wrote on him recently and the song that I wrote on I really enjoyed uh it's called, it has kind of a long name, Johnson and Johnson and John's son. It's like a reference <laughs> to the artists on the track because there's a few of them and it's like a story of growing up. And and that song is, you know, I've been listening to it a lot. That's a really, really good song. I, th th that one I really like. So I'd say that and, and Bungalow Collect lately are the ones that I've Sweet. been playing. Yeah. Sweet. For you, like, what's, uh, uh, well, first off, I would love to check them out. So thank you. I, that's the beautiful part of doing these podcasts is like, I get to I just hear about all these like other artists that I don't know about. That's the beautiful, like the beautiful part of like making music in the 2020s or even the 2010s, right? Uh, it feels like, like anybody and everybody can make music now. And that's a beautiful thing, right? To be able to everybody can kind of have the means to create it. I mean, so many people make, you know, music in their bedrooms for crying out loud, right? Or makeshift studios in their homes, right? It's not like how it used to be where you have to like buy all the studio time. Uh, but the flip side of that though, it's like, there's an oversaturation. So it's like, you you feel like you don't even, you can't get a grasp on everything because there's just so much out there. Like the craziest part about it is like finding an artist and seeing they have like millions of monthly listeners and you're like, well, I've I've clearly been sleeping on this, you know what I mean? So it's 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 just so cool like how many like followings of, you know, artists have these like really like heavy heavy followings that you just don't think about, you know. 
yeah totally it seems like that's becoming really common with spotify in the streaming era it's like yeah it happens to me a lot too i feel you like i'll find an artist and i'm like whoa you're like massive and i've never heard it i don't you know it's just it's interesting it's a change in 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 some ways i mean i think with ear milk it's interesting too because i've realized like I mean, I knew there was tons of music coming out, mm. but now I'm like, wow, there's an insane amount of stuff coming out every day and people are, everyone's trying to hustle and, and get their stuff heard. And it's just like crazy because the working at ear, with Ear Milk, it's definitely opened me up to just like how huge that scope is. Whereas before I, I wasn't as aware, you know, sp- specifically how, how massive it is. <laughs> exactly. And I'm a writer myself too. Like I'm a music writer. Like I write for, um, I've written for some other platforms as well more local than nothing like major like ear milk but i uh i write for a pretty big platform called boston hassle in boston so i've been writing for them for a while i wrote for mass music radio for quite a bit uh boston culture for a little while as well so but in the, i think the cool part about it too writing but also like the the part that gets me so much i don't know how you feel about this uh talk about this from a writing standpoint but like i get so anxious because i'm like oh my god i could write about this and i could write about this and i could write about this and so like because there's so much it's almost like trying to pin down like what i can write about and there's only like so much time in the day you know what i mean like but i love like listening to something and being like oh i really want to write about this you know so i don't know yeah. how, you feel, how you feel about that but totally i feel like it's a great feeling to like know you you just want to put someone on for the love of their music. Like Mm. you just want to, you know, I think that's a great thing. And I I do really enjoy stuff like that. And how how about you? What, what, what artists have been sort of sticking out to you that you've written about lately? Or I'd be curious. Yeah. Great question. Uh, Flipping it on me. I love that. Uh, (laughs) Because you're getting into your interview bag recently, right? So you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're a vet, you know what you're doing. Um, Yeah. So there's this artist, um, I haven't really wrote about him extensively as of now, but I have a good relationship with him. And he actually writes for Daily Chiefers. Uh, his name's Heath240. And he's from out here. Uh, recently just relocated to Miami. But I think you would really like his his style. He's more of like a bedroom pop uh, vibe. and he, But he also can kind of get into like a, a, like a lo-fi hip-hop bag. But uh, he certainly is, is an artist like that's making major moves and like people should definitely pay attention to whether they're from, you know, from Canada or, you know, the United States or wherever. That's an artist I would definitely enjoy. Um, and speaking of DK, one of the art, uh, articles I just recently put out on our platform, because I actually we have a blog as well for turntable teachers. So like anything I write or we have a, we have another writer too. a shout out Gordon Henry. And any, we have a, like, again, it's not anywhere near Ear Milk or Boston Hassle or anything like that. But we try to, you know, like write as much as we can if uh, for our own our own page. But DK just produced a Western Massachusetts cipher that went is just crazy that people should check out. Like, that's a really dope shit. Like, Western Mass has a has a like a movement or a budding scene right now that not a lot of people are talking about. Like, just for context, like. Boston's on sort of like the eastern side of of Massachusetts, like geographically. So just naturally, like a lot of, you know, a lot of the, you know, entertainment just kind of falls into Boston. It just kind of happens that way. And there's a, there's a decent scene from where I'm from. I'm on the, I'm from the North Shore of Massachusetts. There's like a definitely a scene up there. Um, you know, Boston, like all the all those different suburbs of Boston and also just like communities in Boston have their own sort of scenes, too. Um but Western Mass has kind of gotten left out of that a lot of times. Like Joyner Lucas is from Worcester, but that's not even really like technically ma- like Western Mass. It's like more central. So Western Mass has this scene that like nobody's covering, and it's really it's, it was really great to be able to like shed some light on that on them because like they're doing some really amazing things. And our co-host Phoenix Rios, who comes on and we talk music, uh, he is from that area as well, and he had a verse there. He's a, he's an artist himself, so. Um, the Paper City Studios Western Mass guys, they're really doing some some amazing things. Um, I'm trying to remember too, like some of the things. I mean, I wrote one for China Blue recently. He's an artist that if nobody knows about him, like they should definitely check him out. He's got like a really cool like pop style. I mean, I know you know his music, but he's got that really cool like, you know, um, like experimental pop, I would say, or alternative pop. I love his style a lot. I think he's doing really awesome things. Um, who else did I recently write for? Um, another artist, Hex, who he just actually recently uh, relocated to Austin as well, uh, and he has helped us out a lot. Like he's an he's an engineer too, so he's helped us out a lot with uh, some of like our tutorial episodes. He just dropped an amazing single called "Wait" with Cronin, um, 
that people should check out as well. You, I think you would really like it too. Um, he actually did some engineering work with China Blue, so he's kind of familiar with that camp. And yeah, that's all I can. Same with you. Like I've, I've written so many at this point. It's like, you know, I, I I forget sometimes, and that's and that's and that's kind of the unfortunate part of it too. It's like you want to remember everything you wrote, you know. Um, let me see what else have I written late recently. Um, oh, and then if people like experimental hip hop, oh, this will be my last one. Um, there's this artist named Sid Mason out, out in LA who's doing some like really interesting um, experimental hip hop. And I'm a big fan of experimental hip hop. I mean, I'm a big fan of like JPEG Mafia, um, Brock Hampton, Den, uh, Denzel Curry. I got him on the wall. Uh, Danny Brown. Like I'm into that whole uh, that whole scene. Death Grips. I can even get to like that experimental side of things too. So um, there's just a lot, man. There's a lot. And there's a lot more I want to write about too, you know, so. Uh, great question and this is this is going to be a lot people are probably feverishly writing down <laughs> all these yeah. artists right now listening to this so. yeah no that's awesome i mean I, i'm curious to uh i was curious to know because i'm always you know trying to explore and find new artists and stuff but yeah no that sounds cool i think I, hex I, I do think i i know him hmm. but uh yeah i think i knew him through china blue and and those guys but yeah that's really dope i'll, I'll check out the rest of those guys uh that's that's really cool yeah i'll send you some stuff after uh after we get off too for sure but yeah guys make sure you go check out jacob ezra who's writing like i said writing for ear milk doing some amazing things so make sure you guys uh you know we'll, we'll link in the description of course earmilk.com and make sure you uh, check out the rest of uh jacob's articles that he's done because he's doing some really great things and in, in just the music writing scene and i love talking to another fellow writer it's always great I've, i haven't really had like another writer on the show before so this has like been cool to kind of get in that in that what i guess my last question on this on this front is like what like how, what's your process when you're writing? Um, cause I feel like we all, I, this, this is, this is interesting to me because I, I don't know if like my process is like similar to other writers and things like that. So when you're about to, when you know, you're like, okay, I definitely want to write about this song. Um, like where do you start? Like, how do you, how do you like formulate the actual like article when you, when you go to actually do the write up? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I mean, I, I think I have like a kind of structure that I try to follow and, uh, I do have like kind of a template in my head. I mean, I don't like to always do the same style, but I, mm. you know, I, um, I definitely like to talk about the artist's background to provide context in that way. Just uh, talk about some of their story and, and, um, with, with a lot of the posts that we have for like new releases, they're not like super long, but it's definitely enough to like get a little bit in depth. And then a lot of the time, you know, um, yeah, it's a lot of, I'll, I'll like go and try to describe the different sounds I'm hearing and analyze the sounds and just maybe try to t tie the song into the bigger picture of what the artist is maybe trying to communicate or what, what they're about, what, what they're like, maybe if I can sort of figure out kind of what angle they're trying to take, or maybe a bit of their like mission and what they're doing, I'll, I'll try to tie it into that if I can. So that's, that's kind of the way I, I like to write the the pieces. Cool. Cool. I like that. Yeah, I, I would say I'm pretty similar too. Like I always like to, I, I agree. I love to give like that first paragraph or a few sentences, like providing that context, I think is really important. Like, I think that's what like draws a reader in. Cause if you've never heard the song, which is kind of what the whole point is, right? Or like the whole point is like, oh, you probably haven't heard this song before. Or maybe you, or I shouldn't say that. Maybe you have, and you want to like see what somebody that's a, you know, ex, I don't I don't say expert, but like someone that's, you know, can write about music, like, what, have, what do they want to say about it? Um, but if somebody that hasn't heard it, you know, providing that context, I think really like kind of, you know, gets that like it, there's a hook, you know what I mean? And like, and that's what I teach my students. Right. I mean, like I said, I'm an English teacher. So like when we were talking about writing, like it's always like, OK, how do you hook your reader? Right. You don't want to just like jump in and be like, OK, this is what they're communicating. Because it's like, oh, it's like it doesn't really give any context. So I love that. I'm, I'm pretty similar. Like I definitely it's interesting. Like I can't. I can't be listening to the song and writing about it at the same time. No, I don't know how you are about it. Cause like I, I have to listen to it a bunch of times and then write and then go back and listen again and then write again. Like I, I can't sign for some reason I can't simultaneously write and listen to the music at the same time. It's just, that's not how like me personally, it's not how my brain works, but um, yeah, there's a lot more that goes into it than people realize, I think, you know, and um, I'm certainly somebody that uh, you know, will harp, will, uh, really harp on it like too long sometimes even to and try to you know get a little bit like ah is this is this you know perfect or whatever and I, I have to be better about just like you know what it, it's it's not gonna get any better just 
you know, you start, when, <laughs> once you start to make too many edits with it, you almost it almost goes the other way, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I feel you. I mean, I, I'm similar. I, I actually didn't, I, I didn't notice that too much, but it's true. I never write when I'm listening to the song. I always it's have hard. to vote. Like, yeah. yeah, it is weird. It's hard. It's I'll hard. even, I'll listen to the song and then maybe I'll have some other music while I'm writing to like keep me going. But I, the actual song, I find it weird to, I feel like you just, it's kind of like focusing on one or the other or something, but yeah. I feel similarly. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, yeah, the only way I can actually write and, you know, listen to something at the same time, it has to be like instrumental music for me like I can't be listening to because I'll start writing the lyrics or something like <laughs> get yeah. it all fumbled up but yeah that's exactly. really cool man. Sure. that's really cool man I love it so again uh you know guys make sure you guys go subscribe to ear milk uh, I definitely have been a f- I it, it's cool like before I even really got into like the music industry per se like that was a platform I like knew of already so it's so cool to like uh talk to somebody that's been writing for them and uh so guys make sure you follow ear milk and uh and Jacob as well so you guys can check in with his articles and the rest of the ear milk team because i'm you know you guys will find a lot of great new artists and and songs from there for sure and you obviously follow boston hassel and like turntable teachers too of course but like you know this is our guest so we're we're we're, he's he's shining today um and so i want to talk to you a little bit like kind of my transition point because uh you create music yourself so i know you had mentioned that you really became a music head because of your father playing, you know, old hip hop and Tribe Called Quest and, rec- you know, vinyl records and things like that. So for you, like, when did you start taking it super seriously where you actually wanted to like start putting music out? Yeah. Um, I, I actually, well, I was about 18 um, at the time and uh, I, I, I was just, I, I would just make a lot of mixtapes like many people when they're starting out and not share it with anyone and just kind of make it for personal enjoyment, which was actually a great period of time. I look back very fondly on it. It's just something about that freeing period where like, you know, no one else is going to hear it and there's no, you know, it's just, there's no, there's no voice in your head critic. I mean, there's some, but not as much because you just don't feel like anyone else is going to hear it. It's kind of a beautiful time. So that's, anyways, I was doing that for quite a while, maybe a year or so. And then I just had a couple tracks and, um, I was just, I'd play it for, I started playing it for friends and, uh, they, they, they were just like, Hey, they were like pressuring me to release it. And I was like, nah, nah, like whatever. And, and at the time I was like, I'm not going to really rap publicly, you know, like I was just like, <laughs> it's just a hobby and whatever. Yeah. And, and they were just like, no, you you have to do this. Like, really, like, please, like, I'm going to be mad at you if you don't. Like, just oh, try. Awesome. And I was like, so I, I ended up releasing some stuff on SoundCloud and just net, just met a lot of cool people on SoundCloud back in the day. Like, you know, this was like 2016, 2017, like a few years back. So, um, like, I just, I met uh, a lot of cool people through that and just collaborated through SoundCloud. And that's kind of how I started. Um, did, did some small little like open mics in my city, little shows and things. And I, I used to go by a different artist name. Now, now I, I go by my own name. I, I used to go by a traffic with a, with a K traffic. It was my artist name. And yeah, I, I so that's how I started out was the tra- that project traffic. And, and, uh, one thing led to another and, and I, I, now I'm, you know, I'm, 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 trying to release music under my name so it's 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 been a great like little little uh journey you know yeah yeah interesting you had pfs people to push it you you don't really again this is this is i think almost a compliment you, you strike me as somebody that's um you, you don't really like need the spotlight it's not something that like you really really want you know what i mean like i can kind of sense that from you like you you would much rather like make music and you know write about it and just like you, you, I, I, and that's a good thing I, I love that about you like you seem very just very level-headed but um was that was that like a hard transition for you to actually like start to really get the, the music actually out there yeah no and I, I appreciate that it um but it's uh yeah yeah definitely uh, I've always had anxiety over that like I think many people do but oh, yeah, yeah no I yeah. I it was a strain it's it, it is always a challenge for me to promote my own work um versus just doing this writing like laying back and writing about others because i am you know by nature quite introverted and um laid back in in a sense so it is it is a bit maybe counter to my nature in some ways to to be out there promoting my stuff but i just i just love i just love doing music so i just kind of see it as like a a necessary evil or just like i just you know 
Yeah. But I think in a sense, though, like it's good self-awareness, right? And also at the same time, though, it's a good thing for you because you're like, hey, like I, I want to try to get, step out of my comfort zone. And because that's that's the only way we grow as human beings, right, is getting outside of our comfort zone. And so for you, like I just love that you took that leap of, leap of faith, right? Because uh, just in talking to you, like you would never strike me as somebody that would be an artist. But I think that that's going to make you more relatable at the end of the day, though. You know what I mean? Like people are going to sense that and be like, hey, I'm an introvert, too. You know what I mean? And like this guy's an introvert, too, and he's doing it. So why can't I do something like some kind of art or get myself out there? You know, so that's I think it's going to be a good thing in the long run. So thanks. St- keep keep telling that story because I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people. Thank you. I I appreciate that. And that is a really good point because that's something that I have thought about where down the line, especially, I'm definitely going to try to bring that out more in my music. Um, So, yeah. And and I said necessary evil promoting. I don't mean that it's evil or bad to promote yourself. I just meant that it's something that I don't take to as naturally, you know, but but yeah. And yeah, no, uh, sorry. Um, As we were saying, uh, yeah, I, I do hope to make that more of my identity as an artist over time. Yeah, I think, like I said, I just, I don't know, just, it's just talking to me. Not me. I could be way off base, but like, I just think just in terms of, uh, you know, what I've already known about you, it seems as though like that's going to be something that could be like, again, like good for people to hear, you know, because I think that like that transparency is amazing. Like we like, I think people yearn for that now more than ever is like really wanting that transparency, you know? I don't know. That's, that's the point of this podcast. We want to try to be as transparent as possible. We don't, want to, we don't ask the cookie cutter questions around here. Although I will say, like, I will ask the one question. So I know your last name Salzburg, but where does Ezra come from? Is that like a middle name or, or is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my middle name. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Though. Yeah, really cool. Awesome. So your first single that you dropped was Synchronicity, correct? Was that the first one? And then 96 roof, Rooftops after that. And then most recently was Skyfall. Mm-hmm. Um, Synchronicity had kind of did well, like for the, for your first single, man. I mean, it got over 10,000. I think it's, I think it's at over 10,000, if I'm not mistaken, last time I checked on Spotify, which is great for a first single. Are you kidding me? So, uh, talk to me about each one kind of in order. So like, obviously Synchronicity came out first, like why, why that, why was that the first single, uh, for you? Like what, and what kind of like reception have you gotten from that one? And then, you know, we'll move on to the next two. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, Synchronicity, it's, uh, I guess I, it was kind of a track to like test the waters in a sense. It was like me, see, cause I, I like I said, I, I used to go by a different artist name and the music I was dropping under that name is more in line with synchronicity. So I was like, but it, but it combines like the direction I'm going now. So I guess it was like a transition track for me personally, evolving my style as well as, you know, I didn't have like a big fan base or anything, but people who were listening to my old work, like it kind of, it tells them like, I'm not just totally abandoning you or, uh, but it was meant to be like a bridge, kind of bridging the gap between two sounds, even just me personally from my own creative process. Um, And yeah, I mean, it was also a track that I felt like it was a good intro because I didn't, I, I really, I do like the track. I'm proud of it, but I don't feel that it's quite as strong as the stuff that's coming. So it was just to test the waters and kind of bridge a gap between an, a sound that I was trying to evolve. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I am quite happy with the reception. Um, it's been really cool to see. I've never had a song get that many streams or anything, and yeah. that's cool. Um, it, it, a playlist, uh, it got on a playlist that helped me quite a bit. Uh, Lyrical Stamina, it was called, and, and that was really dope. So... Um, but yeah, it's, people seem to connect the, the feedback that I've received with that song. I guess people have been connecting with some of the, the, the lyrics. Cause that's probably my most lyrical focused of the three songs. Yeah. I would say so, so that's too. the main feedback I've had. Yeah. Really cool, man. Yeah. That's, I, I like that one a lot. I, I definitely, I, I'm a bigger fan of Skyfall out of the three. I think that's my favorite of the three, but I definitely want to talk about 96 Rooftops as well. So talk to me a little bit about that track. So you kind of transitioned from Synchronicity to 96 Rooftops. Um, how did that song kind of uh, come about? Yeah, this one was like, um, it was a track that I was just lis- listening to this this producer, Sauron. He This is the one out of the three that I didn't make the beat for. The other two, I should mention, the other two I, I made the beats. Oh, cool. Um, Skyfall and Synchronicity. But uh, this one, it was produced by Sauron. He's, he's a really cool producer. And I was listening through a beat tape of his and I found this beat and I just, I was like, I got to use this. And so I, I, I got it, 
purchased it from him. Um, and it was just like, I guess uh, it was, it was, it was maybe. So when I talk about bridging that gap, I guess it was kind of, you know, a bit of a new sound for me. It's a little bit more trap oriented and less like, it's still very lyric. It still focuses on lyrics, but it's a bit less lyrical. It was more just to like bring a vibe and like, it's a bit more trap oriented than some of my other stuff. So I guess I was trying a new sound and I do enjoy trying to be diverse and try new things. And I, I think these songs aren't that different from each other, but down the line, I'm going to try and do some really different styles. Um, but yeah, I was just, I just remember I wrote it in like a mood of frustration. I was just like, I was just, it was, it was like, just like, I was just like, Oh, I just, I need to, get, it was kind of like a get stuff off the chest song, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, I just was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go in and kind of vent on this. So that's, it wasn't like, I, I don't really, you know, it, some of the things on there, it's just me saying it like to express myself and things, but yeah, that's kind of a venting track, I feel like, and to try a new sound. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, when you're starting out, I mean, you have to you have to try something different, you know what I mean? Like get your figure out what your sound is going to be like. And there's that thing of like obviously you want to reinvent your sound as well as you go. But of course, you, you know, every artist I think when they've started out, they've had some sort of sound that like people have like gravitated towards originally, right? And then kind of once you gain that base, then you can reinvent. But like when you're starting out, you have to kind of figure out what it is like, what's going to land well, what do I what am I comfortable with doing? So I totally understand that. And then Skyfall just came out recently. You also dropped a music video with that too. And I really like this one a lot. So, um, you know, what was, what was the Skyfall all about? And, and I, I actually didn't even realize that you made the beats for some of these. So that's really cool too, that you you're definitely a jack of all trades, man. You have a, you have a lot of talents, which is fantastic, but I want to hear about Skyfall as well. And then of course the music video too, cause you just had dropped that uh, as well. Yeah, t- for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, Skyfall, it's, a. Uh this yeah that it's funny because i i had it (laughs) i had another version of that song originally and it was quite different you know it was the same sample same sort of sound but it was like it was a very different type of beat it was quite experimental and it was like faster and it was it, it was just more claustrophobic which i like i like that sound but i decided to like stretch it out slow it down a bit make it a little more traditional and uh yeah i i i it was just, you know, it's, I guess it's a track about, I guess I wrote it about just, you know, um, doing your thing regardless of like external influences. And, and that's what a lot of my three songs have kind of been centered around that idea of just like going out and trying to be yourself and do your thing, despite like what the world says or what the expectations may be. And that's just kind of like a core theme that I've been writing on. But yeah, I'd say that's like the main theme of the track and, um, but uh, yeah, I think that one actually was my uh, out of the three. That that's my personal favorite so yeah, me far. Too. Me too. Also. And then what about the music video? Like, well, how did that come to be? Like, because you you don't have music videos for six, uh, 96 rooftops and synchronicity, do you? No, I no, no I I did like a, a visualizer for and um, like some this kind of like vlog video for 96, but we never had like a full on music video. Right. So yeah, this is my this is the first like Jacob Ezra music video, full full on music video, and uh, yeah, I, it was I had a really it was a really good time filming it. it. It came together very organically. I shot it with a good friend of mine who I've known for years. His name's Sepnia. He he runs a video company. I I recommend checking him out if Sweet. anyone's listening. Yeah. It's Sepnia, uh, S E P N I A, and yeah, we worked together on this, um, and it's shot in this really old art deco like vintage building in my city that's kind of like a hidden treasure in a sense called the marine building and it was really cool i thought security was gonna like kick us out right away so i was like (laughs) this might not work but they were like they they approached us and i'm like oh here it comes but they were like ah no it's fine like film and do whatever you want i was like what like so that was cool too we just kind of had free reign you know so Oh, worked out perfect, man. Yeah, so definitely, definitely shout out Septia. We'll link them in the description too. And is of course the music video, guys. Make sure you go check these out. And all the singles are going to be linked in the description. So after the episode, of course, don't don't leave us yet. We're not quite done with Jacob, but uh, <laughs> we definitely go listen to those songs afterwards. And uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Let's, let us know if you like them. Um, last question on for this uh, particular segment of the show, and um, you know, talking about your music. Like you know, you had mentioned a little earlier that you that the songs you've dropped so far are different than what you have coming. So uh, what's the next, you know, rest of this 
year and maybe beyond for you? Like what, what do you have coming and what's the set? What, what can fans of yours already? And, and then of course, people that are just coming on to you for the first time, uh, you know, what can like, uh, the, the audience maybe expect from Jacob Ezra going forward in terms of like sonic, uh, appeal. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 I'm quite excited for, for what's going to happen. Cause I think I, I am really putting an effort into making stuff that's, it's just less traditional. I, I think it's more off the beaten path, more, I guess in a sense, more true to myself. I wouldn't say the other songs aren't true to myself, but just coming out of more of an, even more of an intuitive place, like less going into it being like, I'm going to make a rap song, yeah. you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just more just free flowing. Um, and, and uh, there's going to be more melodic sounds. Like I'm doing some kind of more singing and there's going to be different kinds of beats that are, working with you know influences from like electronic and drum and bass and and an indie rock even so i'm I'm trying to bring in more i'm trying to experiment more and and make stuff that is just a little it's just more um sta- it, trying to trying to i've really been putting an effort into making stuff that like stands on its own as like its own thing because um not that the past three songs have been inauthentic at all it's just they're just there was a bit of like, all right, I'm going to make something that's kind of familiar. You know, it's like hip hop and people can recognize that quite quickly. Whereas this new stuff, I, I, I think I have a goal to like deviate from that while still making something that people can enjoy quite easily. Not Nothing too unlistenable by any stretch, but but off the beaten track, you know. Cool. That's great. I, I, I'm just from somebody like the, that's the type of music that I really enjoy. So I, I'm definitely enamored. And I even, I even, like I said, either, every single you've had, I've liked each one a little bit more. So I'm, and, and because it's gotten a little bit more, I would say, uh, well, as you say, off the beaten path. Um, do you have any like release dates or anything coming soon? Or is, are you, is everything just kind of still like in the works and uh, you're not ready to, to, to put a date on it or anything like that? No, it's cool. I, I do actually have a a new single coming May twenty seventh. Oh, great! So the, literally this, the week the, the week that this this podcast is airing. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've I've said I've announced it, but but yeah, it's it's gonna. I'm excited. It's uh yeah, it's it's gonna be you know this one. It, it's still not like <laughs> when I say it's getting experimental. It, it's a bit more of like over the next few songs but yeah this one's becoming it's like quite melodic it's like bordering on r&b and and right. it's smoother and it, it's it's more it's less harsh it's 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 just gonna be it's it I'm, I'm excited it's it's smoother i'd say that's a good way to describe it and i'm excited to share it with people um it, it's v- quite different from the other stuff that that i've put out so far yeah sweet man what's it called oh it's called cold cold, cold. Ooh, okay okay i'm into yeah. it very nice so yeah, so definitely go check out this track. It comes out literally if you if you're listening to it this week, the week of May 23rd. It's it's coming this Friday, so definitely uh, make sure you check that out for sure. That's a or yeah Thursday evening, whatever it is. Uh, check it out, guys. That's fantastic. I'm really really excited. Um, I, another question that just kind of dawned on me too that I'm curious your thoughts on because I don't make music, um, I only write about it, but you do both. So how does like, do, or or maybe it doesn't, but does writing about the music help you in writing your own music? Like, is, is there any kind of connection there and vice versa or are they kind of just a separate thing? Yeah. I think it really has changed the way I approach music writing about it. Um, I think it's also an exposure thing. Like I just, I see what so many people are doing and it influences me in new ways. I just gained new influences I never would have had. Mm, and so um, yeah, I I think, yeah, just b- being, because I guess also, yeah, the analytical brain, like being more awakened and getting used to that. So now maybe I approach the songs a little bit more analytically in, in a sense. But um, I think it's definitely changed it. Um it's made me more up to speed on like trends and things and like where the, where the different parts of the music business are going and things like this. So that, that's also a cool part of it. Yeah. I was, yeah, it was definitely just kind of dawned on me because I was like, I was interested if like that actually there's a connection there. And I know you wrote a, like a lot of poetry back in the, like in, when you were young. So 
I think that sort of like skill probably just kind of came back like that, you know? Um, and same with me too. It's kind of funny. Cause like I, I almost, I almost didn't go into teaching when I was uh, in high school. I loved video editing and direct, like direct, cause I was in a, a video editing class and the, the program at my school was like four, like three different levels. And I took it all four years, got like to the highest level and was like one of like the main, like he, he would always joke around. Shout out Mr. Lombard. He's probably not listening to this at all. I, I hope someday that I <laughs> he, he ch- tunes in. This. He'd be very proud, put it that way, if he saw what I'm doing now. Uh, you know, try to find him or whatever, hit, hit him up with this. But either way, um, you know, I really wanted to do video editing super bad. And like he would always argue, he would always talk about it. It was, it was a TV, TV one and then advanced TV and TV seminar. And we always joked like seminar was like a varsity team basically. Right. <laughs> so like my senior year, I was like one of the captains of this, you know, TV seminar. I, mean, I was an, I was an athlete as well, but I was so enamored with it. And then I just like at the time, the time in my life, like I needed something a little more like consistent and just, uh, you know, when I was going into college, I was like, damn, I need something that's going to just make me money. That's going to be like, like a little more consistent. So, um, and I love teaching too. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely, I, I do really love it. I love my career, but, um, it's funny. I've come back around now and started you know, obviously video editing and podcasting and all this stuff, you know, audio recording. And, uh, it's, it's funny how those skills kind of just, just come back. Like, like, was there a period of time for you? Like you stopped writing poetry or have you always written poetry? And it's just like, you were just started to just make it into music. I guess I have always written poetry and just form, tr- translated it in, into music. But something I do think about nowadays is like I write lyrics so often that it's actually usurped all those other forms of writing. Well, besides ear milk. But right. I really don't write stories or, or, or poems that aren't in lyrical form. Mm-hmm. I don't write those things anymore because I'm so frequently writing lyrics. Right. And it's kind of just, I feel like it's just when you're a writer, maybe you just have like this hunger, this passion. And it gets, maybe if you're just really going on one thing it just fills that and then I, I i just i'm i'm just kind of but i i do think that the lyrics are very much still poetry but i mm. haven't written like those sort of um poems in a, quite a long time now gotcha. i think very cool mm-hmm. i love it man really good stuff uh i definitely want to take a quick transition here and i want to talk to you about uh ro uh excuse me sorry I almost called it Roadhouse. It's not Roadhouse. It's Roundhouse. See, I told you I was going to fuck up. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I want to talk to you about... Oh, Actually, you know what I'm going to ask? Before I ask Roundhouse, I have this other question that I didn't have, but I'm curious now. So I'm curious. You're from Vancouver, Canada, and I know nothing about the Vancouver, uh, Canada scene in terms of like music. So does Vancouver have a music scene? Are there... Is there an indie artist scene out there? Um... I would imagine, of course, you're you're tapped in there somewhat, or, or I would think. But um, are you like one of the art, like one of the only artists? Is there like what, what is the, what is the music like coming out of Vancouver? Um, there's definitely a scene here. A lot of it, you know, there's a big indie rock folk scene. Mm. There's a pretty big electronic scene. Um, we're quite mainly we're mostly known for like indie rock, okay. uh, but as far as hip hop, which I've largely been involved with. It's always been small. Um, I think it's starting to grow quite a bit. And it's really interesting. This current phase or time in Vancouver hip hop is like, I'd say it's the start of what could become something quite a bit more known in a similar way to like maybe what you were saying with Western Mass. And I guess that's part of why I kind of connected with Western Mass was because I think the scene there and the scene where I'm from, there are similarities. I think it's just like the scene just needs... I don't know, a bit more interconnectedness or like a unifying sound that sets it apart from others, if I'm going to be honest. Um, And, but I think it's, it's growing and I think it is going in a positive direction overall, but we've always had a relatively small hip hop scene. There's been good artists over the years and things. And, uh, but we, we, we have, you know, we're, I think it's going in, in a good direction. Cool. Yeah. It's (laughs) very, it's interesting that you compare it to the Western mass scene. Cause yeah, I almost feel as though, They've, they've sort of all kind of gotten on this train where it's like, you know, if we're not going to be recognized with, you know, people from Boston and other parts of Massachusetts, like, let's get together and like make the noise, like make enough noise where like people can't ignore us anymore. And I love that. Right. And DK's talked about that a bunch, like with me, just off air, on air, like so. And uh, he's been very transparent about that. And he but it's I mean, yeah, you, you rep where you're from. You know what I mean? Of course. And you want to do that. So. 
um that's really cool. Any any artist from Vancouver, whether it's you know whether it's the and I, and I like folk music a lot, like indie indie rock. Like I can definitely get into that, into that uh, genre. Is there any like artists, maybe a few that are bands that uh, you're really into from Vancouver that people should uh, check out? Yeah, for sure. Um, my um, my brother, I showed up. My brother Eli Elise. Uh, he, he he goes by Eli S Z E L I S Z. He, he's a dope musician coming out with some he'll he'll be dropping some new stuff soon i'm not sure if i'm supposed to say that or not <laughs> i could just ask him now but no i mean yeah he eli um silver surfer so surreal my friend he's a really dope producer good rapper he'll, he'll probably be dropping soon as well um tion gibbs is a dope artist i've been up on lately i am the living they they're, they're actually in a duo tion gibbs and i am the living Baines, this is a guy Baines who I've been f- following. He's he's dope. Yeah, the, the, those are some. Mostly those are in hip hop. So, but yeah, the, those, there's there's some dope people coming out of Vancouver these days. Cool, fantastic. Yeah, that, those definitely. I want to check out all those for sure. And, and your brother makes music. That's really cool. What does is it similar style to you, or does he do something? Does he do different uh, different stuff? He's more R and B soul. Um, okay, and and some indie rock and. But I'd say R and B mostly. Um, yeah, he's actually co-producing and and featuring on this song "Cold" that's coming oh, out. Cool. So that's pretty cool. People will be able to hear us together and see how our sounds kind of meld because I feel like the track is kind of partway between our sounds in a sense. So. Oh, that's great! I love that. How, yeah. has, that has that been a fun like experience? You guys working on the music together? Yeah, it was awesome. I, we had a really good time recording this, and we were really on the same page with this track, which helped a lot. Like it was quite natural. Um, just kind of we just had a similar idea of how we wanted it to turn out and stuff so do these conversations like happen at the dinner table you just like in your room like listening to music and you're like knocking on his door like yo i got an idea (laughs) yeah you know it's funny because um like after the song was done we were we were both really stoked on it so we were just like obsessed with it for a couple of talking about like the (laughs) dynamics of the the elements of the song for like two days we're like that kick here how does that sound yeah and we're just like you know for like a few days all we were talking about was 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 this track so it's so funny yeah that's great i love it man that's really cool good shit uh it's it's funny like i have two brothers at home too and they'll um they'll like drop me like little tidbits every once in a while too of like oh like do you do this do you try this with the podcast like it's just it's funny that you when uh you know when you got family that uh that is invested in what you do and all but even for you like he's invested in what you do because he does the same thing. So that's super, super dope that you guys can actually like bounce ideas off each other and get into that creative, creative mold. I enjoy that a lot. So very good stuff, man. Uh, I have, you've been amazing on this episode, by the way, like just want uh-huh. to thank you and, and, and for all the insight and, uh, you know, your transparency and, uh, I've just been really enjoying, you know, chopping it up with you and it's been a great episode so far. We have, I have one more question before my final question the one I ask every artist that comes on the show, but I'll save that one because I definitely want to talk about what you just announced that I'm very interested in and curious to hear about. And you just launched Roundhouse Music Company. So talk to me about like the concept behind the company. Like what's your vision with it? Um, and like what services do you potentially offer like for artists and, and things of that nature? Yeah, Roundhouse Music Company. It's a it's a brand new endeavor that I'm doing and I, I'm, I'm really excited about this one because it's something I've always wanted to do. And I guess bringing it to life, I just was kind of like thinking about how can I like use these skills that I'm building to sort of provide something for people and and sort of give a platform in a sense or or give the tools for people to help build a platform. And that's kind of the idea is we, we, we try to help give artists tools to help define themselves and, and, and build up their, you know, careers, basically. We're, you know, it's not like we're like hugely influential or anything but the idea is rather to give them like literally tools like be like all right here's an interview where you can define yourself and tell people your mission and and um give people an overview of a new song or whatever or a song review or an album review to explain more about what they're about and what they're trying to accomplish because sometimes i find that it, it can be difficult to um communicate to your audience you know um a deeper, you know, analysis of uh, your work, especially when you're trying to do it for your own work. 
So the idea is we can bring context through like, you know, interviews and, and reviews that I'll write up and, and we're on the production side because my brother works with me on this and he's, he, he went to school for music composition. Like he, he went to university for that. So, um, he's just putting, you know, and he just graduated. So he's, he's kind of like ready to, to use those skills that he learned. So he's, 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 he's really in charge of that side and producing instrumentals for people. We're hoping to like make music for ads or TV movies. Like that's something that would be really Hmm. cool. And, um, so we kind of have me on the writing side and the promotion and him on the production. That's kind of the idea, I guess. That's really, so it's just the two of you. It's just you and you and your brother. Yeah. Yeah, for now. I'll, well, actually, my friend, uh, I mentioned him, Silver mm-hmm. Surfer, So Surreal. That's like his producer name for music. But he's going to probably get involved too on the side of... Because we do eventually want to kind of do like a label with this. So he's probably going to get in... He's going to he's gonna be involved with that. So I should say he's he's coming on board, but the label's not really ready yet. So, so right. for now, it's mostly just me and my brother, but he's going to be joining us as well. Sweet. No, and I, I totally like and, and agree with what a lot of the things you're saying because that's really the, the point of our, our platform too, like to allow artists to come on and talk a little bit more about the background of their music and like who they are as artists. Because like, excuse me, um, because like in terms of, you know, like, like you mentioned, like you can listen to a song and you can get the idea across, right, of what, they, what they're trying to get at or, or you know, the, the message and what they're trying to communicate. But you know, it's, it's almost better to have them on and talk about it, you know, from come from their own mouth and actually like talk about it rather than just put it in a song. And yeah, it's like, that's, that's really our, like our goal too, is just like get more in depth, like, and make it from like an educational perspective. Right. Cause like, of course I come, like I said, I come from an educational background. So, you know, we want to try to like give people a platform to educate their fans and new fans on like what they got going on and what their music's about. So and, and, and talk about some of these bigger issues, you know what I mean? Like, I, I was really just excited that you talked, like, you were able, you felt comfortable enough to talk about, like, your introvertedness and, like, how that's kind of helped getting outside of that comfort zone for you. Like, I, like I said, I, I've, I've said it before, but I think it's going to be a good thing for people to hear. And so it's just, it's just like, that's just an example of things like that, that you wouldn't maybe know otherwise, you know? So, like, that's, I, I, I definitely love what you're doing. Um, would love to collaborate in any way too. So, uh, you know, get those, get those coasts. So if, uh, you know, if there's any, uh, any opportunity for collaboration, we would love to help you guys out as much as we can too. So, uh, yeah, because you're, you're, you're a good guy. So we, uh, we definitely would love to, uh, extend ourselves to you as well. So I, I, I love the platform. I thought it was really cool. Um, and yeah, so like how, if people are really interested, uh, you know, in, in something like this, like how can they inquire for you guys? Like right now, like how are you guys going to uh, starting out in terms of like, um, you know, like interviews and things like that, just, just reaching out like via Instagram or how's that, how's that all kind of going down? Yeah. Mostly it's been people reaching out to me on social media. Um, we have an e- email, it's, um, roundhouse music co at gmail.com. But a lot of it is, um, people just have been DMing me and, um, yeah, just just uh, really just mostly that's really the thing is people reaching out in DMs. Cool. Yeah, cool. Roundhouse Music Company, everybody, make sure you guys go check that out as well. Linked in the description too. So yeah, just just go tap all those links below after this episode. You'll you got some good goodies for you guys. Jacob Ezra, thank you so much for being here, man. This was a fantastic episode. I have my final question though. Okay, and you you're a fan of the show, so you might know what's coming. If not. It's gonna be a good surprise for you. Everyone loves this question. It's the dream song scenario, and I'll give you. I'll kind of break it down for you. So you get a song. It's your song, Jacob Ezra. Okay, and you can have any artists on this song, dead or alive. Oh okay. man, dead or alive. So I'll break it down. You get one to two producers. Okay, so like if you can't decide on a producer, like you want a melody from one producer, like you know a drum progression from another, whatever it is. So you get one to two producers, and then you get three guest features okay so typically how people do it they have like someone come on and do the hook and get like two verses but it's your song you know if you if you want to do the hook or you know you want three verses like well, however you want to do it but you get three artists and you get one to two producers so dead, dead or alive who would be on jacob ezra's dream song scenario take as long and as much time as you need sir i love that question um i uh producers you know my favorite 
two hip hop producers. I think RZA, you know, in his in his prime, just RZA is just you know to me to me he's my favorite of all time for producers like Liquid Swords in particular. I think it's just a masterpiece. So I think like that era of RZA would be like my choice for the producer. Or you know I I do also really like Kanye's production and and so. I think it would be like maybe if Riza and Kanye were the producers, that would be just prime, you know. Oh, what what a what a uh, blend th- that would be with the two of them, a collaboration. Oh, that would be fantastic, dude. I I'm a huge Kill Bill fan, and Riza absolutely killed that soundtrack, man. Like just destroyed it. Like that that's that that movie. It's an incredible movie, but it's one of my one of my favorite movies of all time. But that movie is is even better because of the score. Like that is the, oh. one of the lone reasons why I love that movie so much, or one of yeah. one of the main reasons. That's super cool, man. Like I love it when like a hip hop producer scores a movie. Like I saw LP did a, I think did a film score recently or something. Oh, did and he? it's just really cool to see. I'm, yeah, I'm wearing, I'm so. wearing Run the Jewels right now. Oh shit, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Actually, LP is another one of my favorite producers. He's ever. great, but, dude. They're awesome. Uh, yeah. But yeah, as far as um, the guests, damn, this one's a bit harder because yeah. I want to make it like, because I could just say like my three favorite rappers, but then I want to make the track like I'd make the track like have a certain, like I'd want the combination to be like work together. You know, you want some kind of cohesion there. Yeah. You want some kind of cohesion. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I have to have on the Wu Tang front, like Ghostface, you know, because Ghostface Ooh. is is like one of my favorite. Like he's, I'd say Ghostface, you know, Ghostface would be one of them. Okay. So we got Riza and Kanye on the boards, and we got Ghostface as one of the verses. You got two more guest features. Uh, Dan- I'd put Danny Brown on there. I'd put Ooh, Danny Brown on there. I don't think we've gotten Danny Brown on on the show yet. I don't think that's been a that's been a choice. I was I was just watching. He's an interesting guy, man. I was just watching his uh his hot ones with Sean. What the hell's his last name? I don't even remember. You, do you know what I'm talking about? Like the hot yeah. ones. Yeah. He, and he's so funny because he's like, oh, I don't even have a. He's like, way he's eating the wings. He's like, I don't have a tooth. I'm just like, I don't eat it. Like he's such a freaking weirdo. But I love yeah. his shit. He's like. <laughs> His his stuff blows my mind. Some of the stuff he he like he, Atrocity Exhibition. I think, like, I, there's not another album that sounds like that. Like, it, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, man. Exactly. No, I'm. A, I love that album. I I really like Danny Brown. I was actually I was listening to that today. I was listening to Atrocity Exhibition and Jay Z's The Blueprint 1.5. Like that that one album he dropped that was like The Blueprint 1.5 or something. Those those two are. I was playing today actually, but <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. And as far as the third, the third, actually there's this rapper I really like called blue. I'd, I'd say oh, blue's like great. Blue's a blue's awesome. Yeah. Blue man. He's, yeah. I've always been a huge fan of blue. So maybe I'd, I'd put blue on there. It'd be like Ghostface, Danny Brown and blue as the guests Ooh. and RZA and Kanye on production. That'd be the dream, the dream lineup. Damn. Yo, Blue dropped a song with Miguel last year. I think it was off his album. I had it in like my top because we do like and year end lists, and it was one of my favorite. I think it was um, maybe it was American Dream. I think I want to say it was. Oh called, the yeah, song. yeah, that track's dope, bro. He he's a he's unbelievable. And then he had that um, and then he had that album with I think it was Exile, right? It was like a, it was like the cra- the crazy long like, like a long hot summer night in L.A. or whatever it was called. I'm probably butchering the name, like a long red hot summer night. But he he's really got a really like a good like con- he's like if you like conscious rap, like he's got that got that down. Like I I I think he's phenomenal and very slept on, like very underrated. Um, I would be interested to see how he'd sound on a Kanye beat. I think he he think he'd sound good on a on, on a Kanye beat. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking because I'm like, both Blue and Danny Brown, I wouldn't necessarily think of them as being on like a Kanye or RZA beat right no. away. But then when I do think about it, I'm like, actually, it, I could see it being really cool. Like I could see it turning out really well. So I don't know. That's just kind of how I was thinking. About yeah, it, because but. Danny Brown's so eccentric and like, you know, he would have he would provide a really great contrast with Blue, who's a little bit more like conscious, straightforward and like serious all the time. Not not all the time, but like he's got a very serious cadence, like the way he rhymes, right? Where Danny Brown's like kind of all over the place and then Ghostface is just that 
lyrical genius, right? Where yeah, that would be that would be sweet. That's a I like I like that dream song scenario. That would be a really cool song. I really I I will say Jacob Ezra featuring Ghostface Killa, Danny Brown, Blue with production from RZA and Kanye West. I think it would be a hit, man. I think it would be a smash. We're we're we're, <laughs> we're, we're manifesting it. We're putting it out, it out into the universe right now, trying to make it happen. <laughs> oh, that'd be crazy, man. That'd be in, insane. Yeah. Hey, something to, <laughs> something to sleep on tonight. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, dream, totally. Dream about totally. that. That's why the dream song scenario. Yeah. Uh, awesome, man. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm glad somebody finally had said Danny Brown. We've had we've had some Wu Tang. Wu Tang. We definitely haven't gotten Blue though. We haven't gotten Blue and Danny Brown. So those are two. I'm glad that we uh, we got those. So great stuff, man. Jacob Ezra, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This is a great episode. I'm, I've been just enjoying the hell out of this one. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by the Turntable Teachers. You are officially a Turntable Teachers alumni, so you are part of the family now, and you're welcome back anytime, of course. Uh, with, and we can't wait to see what you come in next. I can't wait to hear this song, Cold. I'm really excited for it. So congratulations to you and your brother. I think you guys are on the right path doing exactly what you need to be doing. Plug away, man. Tell people where they can find you on Instagram and all that good stuff. Of course, we're going to link everything in the description, but you know, for the people to hear, go for it. Sure. My, my Instagram is Jacob Ezra with, with three underscores in between Jacob underscore, underscore, underscore Ezra. That's my Instagram Twitter. It's uh, Jacob Ezra three Spotify, Jacob Ezra, um, YouTube, Jacob Ezra. Yeah. Those are the main ones. And, yeah. um, and also check out roundhouse music company. It's uh, roundhouse music co on Instagram and Twitter and roundhousemusic.ca is our website. Sweet. Awesome. Linking it all in the description. You guys make sure you guys check that out. And if you're a fan of Jacob Ezra and just coming on to us for the first time, follow us at Turntable Teachers on Instagram. You can also hit up our website, www.turntableteachers.com for all the latest episodes, blogs, all that good stuff. And yeah, obviously subscribe to our podcast on YouTube at Turn uh, the Turntable Teachers and wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud. You guys know the deal by now. And uh, once again, Jacob, thanks a bunch for being on here, man. This was a lot of fun and uh, good luck to you going forward. We will certainly be tapped into what you have coming next. And uh, thanks so much for being here, man. This was a great episode. Thank, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I think you're doing great stuff with the with this podcast. So I'll definitely be tuning in as well. And, and I really appreciate you having me. Yeah, of course, of course. And thanks for listening, everybody, to our audience. We really appreciate it. And yeah, without further ado, I'm Mike. This is Jacob Ezra with the Turntable Teachers. And class is officially dismissed. <laughs> Turn, 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 turn,